Today we're going to look at running um, Docker on a Windows server, which is not something we haven't done before, but there is one addition to this, which is we're going to look at using group managed service accounts in order to run the containers on effectively uh, an AD service. So there are a couple of prerequisites. Now normally you wouldn't do this with a production domain, which is that you need to set up the KDS. Now that's for the group managed service accounts. You may have seen it in previous videos. Uh, our KDS because this is a brand new AD controller has not been set up previously so we're going to backdate it a couple of hours so that it's effectively running. You would not do this normally, you would just set it up and let it propagate. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an AD group. Now we're creating an AD group for our swarm hosts to go into, aka the machines that will be managing the Docker containers. Uh, the reason for this is that it's easier to manage in terms of taking machines out or putting machines into the group. Uh, next up, we're going to create a group managed service account. So this is the one that's actually going to run under the Docker container. And we're going to give it a name, in this case, just the uh, web app one. Uh, realistically, it could be any name you want. It will only be relevant a little later when you need to uh, run the container. We're also going to create the SPN with the web app one and the uh, effectively say that the only people that can retrieve it are members of our previously mentioned swarm group. So those are the steps that we've done on the AD side. Now depending on what you are doing, uh, you would have potentially many hosts to add into the group. In this case I'm going to add a single host and I'm going to show you the error that is generated here. This is because you haven't put the dollar sign on the end of the name of the machine. So if you have that entered with the machine name, uh, with the dollar sign, then all is fine. Just kind of remember it's a computer account and therefore the dollar sign is required. Now just to confirm the status, we're going to go look at AD and we're going to confirm that A, we have a group and that the membership of the group is our um, server that we intend to host the Docker actually on. So if we just open this up, we can see the swarm, we can see that we have our computer account, all good so far. So next off, we're going to say goodbye to Mario and our AD controller here. And we're going to pop over to our group member, aka the server on the domain, and we'll say hello to our default Windows wallpaper. Now, a couple of things I want to do. Uh, first off, we're going to need to install PowerShell uh, tools for AD. That's nothing complicated there. And the other thing that I want to point out is the build version. So we're running currently with 18.09 as the build. Um, this is supported on earlier versions, but realistically you have some other funky caveats to it. So I would say 18.09 or above is preferable. Uh, current build as of this video is 19.09, so that shouldn't really be a problem for those of you looking at it right now. Uh, once the AD components are installed, we can see uh, happily there, we can test to see whether our app account is accessible. Now you may get this message. Now the reason that you're getting this message is because we created that AD group and made it a member while the machine was running. So the Kerberos token hasn't expired or been reset. So the quickest way to fix this manually is to do a reboot. Alternatively, if you've got a lot of time on your hands, you can wait 10 days and then the Kerberos token will just expire. Now through the magic of video editing, we don't need to wait for the reboot. So we can go ahead and log back in and effectively do the same thing that we were doing a moment ago, which is check to see if we can now access the group managed service account we set up. Now this is a straightforward um, action in itself because all we're gonna do is just run a test and we should get a response. Now, important thing to note here is we're not adding the account to this server. So the, we're not doing the regular group managed service account where we would say, okay, install that account on this machine. So here we're just doing the test. The test come back successful now because we've renewed our Kerberos token. And, and someone's undoubtedly gonna write in the comments that there's a better way of doing this. Please feel free. I, I always would love to know how to reset the computer account better. Uh, we're now gonna go ahead and install uh, the module for Docker. So there are PowerShell modules. Uh, this is relatively straightforward. And the next part is we're going to install Docker itself. So we do an install package Docker provider, and then you have a Docker MS FT provider. Bit of a mouthful, I know, but you know, it's the Docker Microsoft provider. That's the abbreviation for it. 
So this goes ahead and downloads a zip file in the background, then extracts it, does the install, and will bring us potentially to our second round of updates. So as an example, uh, we now have the Docker installed. So we've got 19.03.5. Uh, we can see it's Docker Enterprise, and that's happily installed. Now we're going to ask it, hey, is this fine, or do we need to do a reboot? Which is a relatively straightforward question. Um, you can see the Windows feature containers, and it says, yes, a reboot is needed. So again, we're into the whole, let's go reboot the machine. And this hopefully is the last one for this video. Now, at this point, what we've done is we've effectively confirmed that we have the ability to retrieve the account information. We've installed Docker, and we're now at a point whereby we can comfortably say that um, we're able to proceed to theoretically checking if Docker is running before going on to the final step, which is to add the group managed service account credentials to the container itself. So we're just going to go ahead and log in. And what we're going to do is confirm that no further reboots are required. So first of all, we're going to check the Windows feature containers and say, do you need a reboot? Uh, and by the way, always open it as administrator. Just a quick note, you get some funky behavior if you run it as a regular user. Um, so we, we can go ahead and we say, nope, a reboot is no longer required. Awesome. Uh, next up, we're going to say, okay, Docker, give me a version. So we're just going to confirm the version. And the reason I'm doing this is because sometimes, and I'm hoping it'll happen this time, actually, it didn't happen every time. Sometimes it was fine and sometimes it's not. Okay, it's not. Excellent. Um, you see this error message down here. Now, I'm getting this on average one out of four attempts of our install. So luckily we did capture it on this video and I didn't need to repeat this multiple times, which is basically saying that the Docker service didn't start. So we can see it's in a stop state. It's easy enough. We'll start the service. We'll rerun the Docker version command. And we'll see that it's started. All, all fine. Not sure what the bug is there, but it's just an observation from my side. Sometimes that happens. So worth checking or maybe delaying the Docker service startup. With that said, we're now going to go ahead and do a quick uh, pull of our Docker image. So we're going to do the hello world image first of all, confirm that everything is working as expected and no further errors are going to occur. Obviously, since this is not local to the machine, it's going to need to download and run it. Now at this point, we can see that the hello world works. So we're going to try something a little bit more complicated now, which is we're going to install the PowerShell module uh, credential spec. And credential spec is a module that's basically going to take our uh, group managed service account credentials and turn them into a JSON file that we can then pass into the Docker. So this is the only part where it's going to be important to know the account name and the uh, Docker host name. And I'll explain in a moment. So we're going to create the new credential spec. Uh, so we just specify the name of the group managed service account that we're creating again. So in this case, our web app 01. And then the output for this is going to tell us the location of our JSON file that is created. Now you can also use the dash additional accounts in case you need to specify, let's say two or three um, service accounts. Um, we're not going to do that today, but just to let you know, there is the option. And now that we've got that file, what we can do is go ahead and run our get credentials as well, also our get uh, credential spec, and we can see what files are available on this machine, currently only the one, um, but maybe useful if you've got multiple, multiple um, group managed service accounts and you want to see which specs are there. Next, we're going to go ahead and use the security, um, security opt and uh, specify the credentials file, which in this case is the JSON, and that's going to match to what we've put in there. We've also got the host name, which in this case is going to match to our group managed service account. So we're actually calling our Docker container uh, web app 01. And in this particular case, we're going to launch it interactively and we're going to launch PowerShell. The reason that we're doing this is because we want to see what the output is. Now, given the fact that this would normally take quite a while, we're again going to refer to the magic of video editing and speed this up some 800%. Um, so, yeah, uh, downloading one and a half gig <laughs> Docker file, not fun. Um, realistically, 
I went for a coffee break during doing this and I'm doing the narration afterwards. Uh, equally, depending on your uh, speed of machine, may vary, so uh, you really might want to just go for a break. Anyway, that being said, uh, this took roughly around 15 minutes, so it wasn't a total waste of my time, but it was long enough to get a coffee. Now, once the image is downloaded, it's going to go ahead and launch straight into PowerShell because that's what we asked it to do. So the new session that's just opened up is actually inside the Docker container. So if we ask it for a host name, we can see that the host name is webapp01. And I'm now going to go ahead and try to access a domain resource. Now, since I don't have any other resources set up, we're going to just use the sysvol from the AD controller. And as you can see, we can actually see the sysvol. So this is confirming that we have access to network resources which is something that wouldn't be possible unless you were on the domain, or at least gets um, asked for domain credentials. So that has confirmed that all of this is working as expected. So we have successfully passed the Group Managed Service Account credentials into that Docker container. And that concludes our video.